Check the description for the following discount codes. I want to have a quick chat today about updates for virtual desktop, um, primarily for the Oculus Quest 2. There's been like a few changes in, in recent times and like the, the biggest deal is that now my step-by-step -step guide that I made a few months ago, half of that <laughs> is now basically pointless because Oculus or Facebook have finally allowed virtual desktop, um, it's, it's, all, it's always been in the Quest Store, but the functionality to play your PC VR games was not allowed. And of course, that's why most of us have virtual desktop to make the most of our Quest. We want to be able to play our PC VR games completely wirelessly. So up until this point, you would have had to have created a developer account, um, verified your identification with a credit or debit card, then you'd have to get side quest, you have to put your headset into developer mode, enable ADB debugging or ABD, ADB, whichever way around it is. All this other palaver just to be able to then patch virtual desktop um, using SideQuest to enable it to have the games tab appear in virtual desktop so you can play your PC VR games wirelessly. Oculus have finally said, okay, Guy Godin, the guy that makes virtual desktop, you can, you can do that. We'll, we'll let that be official now as part of the normal virtual desktop version within the Quest store. So apart from my half my bloody last video being utterly useless, um, although it's helped thousands of people, you know, looking at the statistics, so I'm glad I did it. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure whether I should do, you know, a new one, just sort of like a revised step-by-step, -step, just showing people what you need to do now, but it's, it's really, you know, pretty simple. You just, you buy virtual desktop, um, you install the, the desktop streaming app on your PC, um, you start that up and then you just load virtual desktop in here, click on the games tab after you've connected to the computer and away you go. I mean, yeah, there's a few options to tweak, but yeah, I, I may do a, a short and revised version just going through the options and stuff. We'll see whether anyone shows any interest in that or not. But this is good news because it really simplifies things. You know, the reason I made that last video is because there were so many hoops to jump through. I think it was something like 10, 11, 12 steps you had to go through to get it to work, that people were getting confused and struggling to do it. And also people don't wanna to have to create developer accounts if they can help it. It's just all more hassle than you need to do. And so now you don't need to do it. You just install the streamer app and get virtual desktop on your Quest 2 and you're good to go. So that was really good news. Um, and what's interesting about this is it got me thinking about how far away Facebook's own wireless PC VR solution is. Someone in the comments the other day said, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's gonna be any minute we're gonna get a wireless solution from, from Oculus, from Facebook. And I said to him, I think it's still probably a little way off. But you know, none of us really know. But because they've allowed virtual desktop in the Quest Store to now support natively running your PC VR games over the Quest wirelessly, this makes me think they must still be a little way off of having their own solution ready. Because if they were close to launching their own wireless solution, allowing virtual desktop to do it puts that in direct competition with whatever their solution would be. Now we're all assuming in the industry, not that I'm really in the industry, us YouTubers and other people on that, we're assuming that they're gonna release some hardware, whether it be a USB 3 dongle that you just plug in the PC that connects you know, over Wi-Fi to the Quest 2, or whether it's a PCI Express card, um, it's probably the only two options really, or perhaps something even that you plug into your ethernet port uh, and that's USB powered, you know, something. There's, there's definitely gonna be a dongle of some sort because the biggest problem with the virtual desktop setup is that there's the, the, the router lottery. Is your current router good enough? You know, if it's just an ISP supplied one, is it gonna give you low latency? Is it gonna be jittery? Is it gonna be hangs and stutters? And all this palaver. You know, Facebook, Oculus don't want to offer a solution that is, you know, a bit of a lottery as to whether you get good results or not, because a lot of people aren't. And they're gonna complain, oh, it's crap, it doesn't work. And it's gonna cause a whole load of, 
you know, mess that they don't need to deal with. If they release a dedicated dongle, whether it's USB, whether it's PCI Express, whether it's uh, Ethernet, they know it will work reliably for every single Quest 2 owner out there. They can put it on its own um, specific band and frequency so there's no interference from anything else and they know it's going to work. But because they've allowed Virtual Desktop to now play PC VR games through the version in the Oculus Store, my gut tells me they're still a little way off. And also, there's you know the rumoured or confirmed um, Quest 2 Pro, I think they're calling it, rather than Quest 3. Maybe that will ship with some wireless connectivity options. If we see that release later this year, in which case, Quest 2 and Quest 1 owners can happily run virtual desktop, buy it through the Quest Store, which means Facebook get their cut, they can have their wireless functionality, and then Quest 2 Pro owners perhaps get a better experience with some dedicated hardware, and you know that would be a reason for, if it's noticeably better than virtual desktop, that would be a reason to upgrade your Quest 2 to a Quest 2 Pro. You know, this is just me speculating, of course, off the top of my head, but nonetheless, interesting thoughts, at least I think so. Um, and again, talking about virtual desktop, one of the other things we've seen update-wise, if I can just bring up the details on my screen here, is that in the VR graphics quality option within virtual desktop, it was just low, medium, and high before, uh, and that gave you a resolution beside it, I believe, as well. Um, or did it? No, I don't think it showed the resolution. I think it just said low, medium, and high. What they've added in, or what Geek Odin's added in now, is a recommended graphics card beside this. I mean, I'm not quite sure when this appeared in Virtual Desktop because I don't go into the options very often. I've got mine set and it works and I leave it. But again, someone mentioned it in the comments, so I had a quick peek uh, today and was like, oh yeah, so there is. So on low, it recommends a, a GTX 1070 or a Vega 56. On medium, an RTX 2070 or a 5700 XT. And then on a high, a 3070 or a 6800 XT. Now, I would say those recommendations are actually pretty spot on because I have a 2080 here in this machine and I run on medium. Um, but this is very, very game dependent. If you're running something that's not visually impressive and it's very basic graphics, then you'll get away obviously with running on high with a lesser graphics card than what's recommended here. And then the opposite applies if you sum, if you sum, if you run something that is visually very demanding and very impressive, like Medal of Honor or Star Wars Squadrons, like I I really can't run on medium in Star Wars Squadrons over virtual desktop even with my 2080, which is higher than the recommended 2070, because it's just too hard to run. You know, the visual quality, the visual fidelity is just too high. So it is useful, I suppose, to have these sort of guidelines in virtual desktop to point people in the right direction, but it very much isn't the be all and end all. If you've got a 2070, you know, and you're running, say, Star Wars Squadrons, and it runs like a bag of poo, which I can guarantee it will, don't just sit there going, oh, well, something must be wrong, because Virtual Desktop says I've, I can run on medium because I've got a 2070. It very much is going to depend on the game itself, you know. And then you've got the quality settings that you can adjust within the game as well. You know, Star Wars Squadrons has quite a comprehensive uh, list of adjustments you can make for its VR graphics options. So you can tweak away. And interestingly, down, my downstairs PC, which has a 1080 Ti in, so a little bit slower than my 2080, but not by much, I find that really needs to run on low to give me a consistent experience. Now the CPU downstairs is only a 1600 AF, so the equivalent to a 2600 non-X, talking Ryzen here of course, so the processor downstairs isn't as strong as my 3800X is here, and I did notice when I went from I had a 2600X before, now we're going to get really confusing with this story. I had a 2600X before the 3800X, and when I went 26 to 38, I noticed about a 20% improvement in VR performance. So, um, so my 2600X 
which is a little bit better than the 1600 AF that's downstairs, because that's the equivalent to a 2600 non-X, is definitely going to be down, you know, 20, 20 or so percent compared to if I was to throw a 3800X in there with that 1080 Ti. But yeah, I have to run that one downstairs in games that have high visual fidelity on low. And of course, this directly relates to the resolution primarily in virtual desktop. So um, that is what these settings are adjusting. The higher that render resolution, the greater the load is on our graphics cards and even on our CPUs, as I mentioned a second ago. Seeing that 20% difference in performance. Although, I mean, that performance difference probably doesn't directly relate to like the resolution or the graphics as such, but it just improves the overall performance of rendering virtual reality or running virtual reality games. And so a little bit of a bump from the CPU will lift up your GPU as well. Um, so yeah, I, that's there what I wanted to waffle on about today. I thought there was a couple of little interesting subjects there and worth just chatting about, especially as I've got to consider doing perhaps a revised virtual desktop setup guide video as 50% of the one I did back in October or whenever it was is now completely null and void. I mean, you can still do it that way. There's just no point. <laughs> There's literally no reason to, to, to do it just for virtual desktop. Obviously, if you're someone that wants to sideload games and other uh, utilities anyway, then you still need to go through that registering as a developer process to do it but um, just not, not purely for virtual desktop. Anyway, thank you very much for listening to my waffle. Um, as always, take it easy.